האם זה באמת סגולה בדוקה? אז סגולה ללמוד בזה? ערב טוב וגוד איבנינג אבריוואן, אנחנו נמצאים בזרה שימשון על פרשס בשלח And we're going to do Os Yud Dalid, section 14. Before we do, let's take a look at a Pasuk uh, in the Parsha. This is from Shmos Perak Tes Vav, Pasuk Chaf Vav. And it reads as follows. This is right after uh, the incident at Mara, the place where the water was bitter and Hashem uh, showed Moshe a, a, uh, a tree. That he could throw into the water in order to sweeten the water and it became uh became uh, drinkable and here comes the pasuk vayomer and he said and hashem said im shomoa tishma if you will surely listen lekol hashem elokecha to the voice of hashem your god vehayoshar be'enov ta'aseh and you do that which which is uh straight Uh, and honest in his eyes, and you will obey his commandments, and you guard all of his statutes, all of the illness that I placed on Egypt, I will not place it on you. Ki ani Hashem rofecha, because I am Hashem, your healer. So the Zer Shimshon is going to talk about the, that Pusik, specifically the last part of the Pusik, and that's uh, where he starts here in Os Yudalit, section 14. Pusik. The Pusik states, Kol ha-machalo asher samti v'mitzrayim, all of the illness that I placed on Egypt, lo asim alecha, I will not place it on you, ki ani Hashem rofecha, because I am Hashem, your healer. So the Zer Shimshon expects us to realize that there's a problem with the Pusik. He actually articulates the problem later in the piece, but for right now, he expects us to know on our own to kind of intuitively know and see the problem. So let's, let's uh, because I've had the benefit of seeing it articulated later, here's what the problem is in the Zer Shimshon, from the Zer Shimshon's perspective. The Pusik says that Hashem will not put uh, the, the uh, illnesses that he put on Egypt on the Jewish people because he is our, our healer. Well, if Hashem doesn't put any illnesses on the Jewish people, then B'nai Yisrael will not need a healer. They will not need a healer. So the problem is that the Pusuk seems to be saying something that doesn't really make sense because it says Hashem won't put illnesses on us and then he, because he's our healer, but we don't need Hashem to be our healer if he doesn't put any illnesses on us. There'll be no illnesses to heal. So that's the Pusuk that he wants us, that's the question I should say, that he wants us to have in mind. He's going to suggest two answers. One of them is going to begin right now. And the second approach will come later. And it's regarding the second approach that the Zerah Shimshon uh, uh, articulates the question. But that's his question throughout this uh, piece. So let's take begin the, uh, for, where, as the Zerah Shimshon formulates the first answer. Kosov HaShulchan Aruch Hoshen Mishpah. It is written in the Code of Jewish Law in the Shulchan Aruch in the section of Hoshen Mishpah. Im Omar lo hamazik. If a person who injured another person says to the victim, Ani, Ani erofe oscha, I will heal you, Ain Shoman lo. We don't listen to him. We are not, the victim is not obligated to accept uh, the, the personal ministrations, medical assistance from the one who injured him. Ella, but rather, maybe Rofe Uman, the mazik, the one who, who uh, caused the injury, has to bring a skilled uh, physician. Umar Pehu Bisachar. And he has to, and, he, and this uh, physician will be the one to heal the injured party uh, through and get uh, through with payment, meaning that the Uh, the person who did the injury is not able to escape from paying for a doctor, an expert doctor to come by suggesting, by proposing that he should be the one who tries to uh, heal the victim, but rather the victim is able to say, no, 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 uh, thank you very much, but I'd really like to get a, uh, 
an expert physician in here to do the medical work and, uh, and you're going to be you, the damage you're going to have to pay for it. And the Shulchan Aruch says that's exactly uh, what has to happen. Happen. That's the halacha. Ad kan l'shono until here is a quote from the Shulchan Aruch. Ve'hakodesh baruchu who wrote ve'shalonu. And Hashem is our healer. He's our, our doctor. Ve'im chas v'sholom yachbol bonu. And if, God forbid, he will injure us, who ain't no yocholir aposeinu? He is not able to heal us. Why is he not able to heal us? Because we just learned in the Shulchan Aruch that the one, the mazik, the one who does the damage, can't insist upon being the healer. Can't say, "I'll do the, I'll do the repair job, I'll do the medical treatments." So Hashem, if God forbid, the Jewish people, some type of punishment, some type of onish comes to them, and Hashem brings that onish upon them. Hashem, as our healer, as our doctor, is not able to, since he's the one who brought the damage, is not able to do the healing, according to that, in line with that halacha in the Shulchan Aruch. And therefore, Hashem uh, is very careful not to bring illnesses and damages uh, upon us, not to harm us. And this is now the reason uh, two that we that we can now understand the pasuk shelo asim alecha kol machala. This is why Hashem said, "I will not bring any of the illnesses of Egypt on you." Mipnei ki ani Hashem rofecha, because I am Hashem, your healer. And if I bring the Egypt the e- illnesses that I put on Egypt, if I bring them and put them on you, I won't be able to heal you. So of course, I don't want to bring illnesses upon you that I cannot then uh, take away, that I cannot then uh, that I cannot then heal you. So let's pause here because the Zer Shimshon has presented his first answer to the question. Let's just recap quickly. Uh, the question was, how, what sense does it make for Hashem to say, I will bring uh, none of the illnesses upon you because I am your healer? Zer Shimshon says that that doesn't fit. If Hashem doesn't bring the illnesses, we won't need a healer. It's not relevant to talk about Hashem being our healer. So the Zer Shimshon answers and says as follows. No, what the Pusik is telling us is that we're supposed to know the halacha as stated in Shulchan Aruch, that a person who damages, who causes injuries to another person, uh, it cannot just come along and say, I'll heal those damages. And therefore, Hashem says, I'm not going to bring the illnesses of Egypt and put them on you, because if I did, I would not be able to remove them, ki ani Hashem rofecha, because I am Hashem, your healer. And, and uh, since I'm the one who brought the damages, I can't heal you, and I want to be able to heal you, because I am your healer. So that's the Zer Shimshon's first approach. Let us now continue. And this understanding allows us to understand a statement in the Medrash Rabbah on Shir Hashirim. On the Pasuk about Shnei Shadayach. And now here comes a quote from the Medrash Rabbah on that Pasuk in Shir Hashirim. The Nogov Hashem es Mitzrayim, Nogov Virofo. This is another, uh, uh, it starts by quoting another uh, Pasuk from uh, Navi. And the Pasuk says, and, uh, and Hashem will strike uh, Egypt, Nogov Virofo, striking and healing. Omar Reish Lakish, so the Medrash Rabbah brings down Reish Lakish's comment on this Pasuk. Ein HaKodesh Baruch Hu Maka Es Yisrael. Hashem does not strike the Jewish people. Ela Im Kain Borei Lohem Refua Tachila. Unless he has already created the remedy, the, the healing from beforehand. So, the, and this is a well-known uh, statement by Chazal, by Reish Lakish. So again, Reish Lakish says, Hashem never punishes or strikes the Jewish people unless before he does so, he has already created and formulated the refua, the healing. Only after Hashem has formulated and developed the remedy and the healing does he then uh, strike B'nai Yisroel. Shenemar, as another Pusik says, this is a quote from a Pusik in Hosea, Kirafi le Yisroel. When I will heal Yisrael, the, those two words come in the pasuk before, right before the pasuk says, the Hashem says, "I will reveal the sins of Ephraim." So the point of the pasuk is, 
when I have created the refuah for Yisrael, then I will uncover the sins that they committed and punish them for those sins. But first, kerafila Yisrael. First, I'm going to formulate the refuah for B'nai Yisrael, and only then will I punish them for their sins. Aval ha'umos ha'olam, but regarding the nations of the world, mitchila malke osam, first Hashem strikes them, ve'acher kach and only after that does he heal them, shenemar, as the Pasuk says, and here it just says v'chule, but this is a reference to the first Pasuk that was brought in, the Nagov Hashem es Mitzrayim, Nagov Rafo. And in that Pasuk, it talked about striking Mitzrayim before it mentioned anything about healing them. So the point of this uh, piece in the Medrash Rabba and Shir Hashirim is to say that Hashem treats the, uh, the Jewish people in the Umos Olam very differently when it comes to punishing them. If it's uh, regarding uh, the Umos Olam, the nations of the world, Hashem punishes them and then afterwards develops a refuah for them. And if they need to wait longer because Hashem is developing the refuah afterwards or there are other complications, so be it. The first comes the punishment, afterwards comes the refuah. However, it is not so regarding uh, the B'nai Yisrael uh, because here Hashem reverses the order and he always creates the refuah, he always creates the healing before he punishes or strikes uh, B'nai Yisrael. And, and now the Zer Shimshon continues. Mishum, this is because, why does Hashem distinguish between uh, Klal Yisrael and the Umos Olam in this way? Because the al korchoch tzorech livro harufua kodem hamako. When it comes to Klal Yisrael, Hashem is compelled, so to speak, to create the cure first before the striking. Kedesh tavo me'eleho, in order that the cure, once it's formulated, once it's already been developed, can come by itself, can come naturally. Because after Hashem punishes the Jewish people, he is our healer. And he would not be able to heal them uh, after he is the one, because he is the one who brought the punishment. And since he's the one who brought the punishment, this is what we learned in the beginning in the Shulchan Aruch, uh, since he's the one who did the damage, he's the mazik, he's the one who brought the, uh, the punishment, uh, he would not be able to uh, insist upon being the healer. And here comes an important caveat. Im sheyirtzu bo heim me'atzmam, unless B'nai Yisrael wants him to heal them, even though he's the one who brought the maka. And, and what that's a reference to is, it's brought down in a Shulchan Aruch by the Meforshim that if uh, the, the, the victim uh, says, I want, I accept the offer of the one who struck me and who injured me to also cure me, then that's a, that is permissible. You can do that. So the Zer Shimshon adds in here, and he's going to continue discussing this idea that if B'nai Yisrael says we would like Hashem to heal us, then even though that creates an exception, and even though Hashem is the one who brought the punishment, he can then still serve as the healer uh, afterwards, because because Klal Yisrael is accepting that and desires that, but under normal circumstances, Hashem would not be able to uh, be both the damager and the healer, and therefore He creates the Rufua first, as we just saw in the Medrash on Shira Shira. Let's continue. Vizohi kavonas hakosav, and now this helps us understand the intent of a pasuk in Yirmiyahu. Refa'eni Hashem ve'erape. Heal me, Hashem, and I will be healed. Why does the uh, Navi use that language of heal me and I will be healed? So the Zer Shimshon explains. Afal pisha ato chavalta be, even though Hashem, you're the one who, who, uh, who struck me, who punished me. Im kol ze, nonetheless, refa'eni. Heal me and I will be healed, meaning I want you to heal me, even though you're the one who did the damage to begin with. Vuchule, etc. And then the Pusik says, Ki tehilosiata, because you are my praise, meaning even though you're the one who brought the damage, my whole, uh, my, my entire uh, life and my entire uh, 
praise in this world it is directed to you. And therefore, I never want to be apart from you, Hashem. Even though you struck me and punished me, I want you to be the healer. And then that's permissible. As Zer Shimshon explained at the end of the previous paragraph, it's an exception to the rule, to the halacha brought down in Shulchan Aruch. So since since the Navi said, uh, heal me and I will be healed, I want you, Hashem, to heal me, even though you're the one who struck me, that's fine. And this is also the novel idea that another Pasuk, this is a Pasuk in Devarim, is, uh, is talking about, is referring to. I have struck and I will cure. Hashem says, I will struck and I will, uh, and I will also uh, heal uh, the the damage. The uh, and, and why is that a chidush? Why is that called a novel idea? Because in general, if Hashem's the one who strikes, he, he, Yisrael, he can't be the one who heals as he because he is our healer. So the Pusik is bringing a chidush and saying, no, in this case, I'm making an exception because if the Jewish people want me to heal them, even though I'm the one who struck them, then yes, I can do it. Vahani mili be Yisrael. And these words only apply to Klal Yisrael. However, with the nations of the world, see the Pusik, as we saw before, says, uh, Hashem will strike and heal. This implies that the striking will be done through uh, a, a destructive malach, a destructive angel, meaning not by Hashem directly. And the healing will also be done through a shliach but not through Hashem uh, directly. So until now, the Zer Shimshon has answered, his, he's brought one answer, one approach to uh, answer the original question, his original question, and then he's brought some supporting uh, psukim where we see the ideas uh, that he developed are uh, apply and help the psukim uh, make sense and help make the psukim coherent because of the explanation, the approach that he explained. Now the Zer Shimshon is going to bring uh, introduce us with uh, to a second approach. The Odyesh Lomar, and we can also say Litare uh, Takusha in order to answer the question. Hanofeles al Hapasuk, that falls on the Pasuk, and here's the question articulated. Diim lo Yosim, ain't so Lirufua. If Hashem doesn't put any of the illness on us, then we don't need to be healed. So, what does it mean? He doesn't put the uh, illnesses on us because he's going to heal us. He's not going to need to heal us if he doesn't put the illnesses on us, which we, as we said before, is the original puzzle. But rather, here's what is really being taught in that puzzle. Since the, the plagues that hit the Egyptians, they were for the purpose of punishing the Mitzrim and, and taking out revenge on the Mitzrim. Kedichsiv, as the Pasuk in Tehillim says, lasos nekama by goyim, to take revenge, to do acts of revenge on the nations of the world. So the Pasuk in Tehillim clearly states this idea that the onesh, that the umos olam receive, is, is to be viewed as the, for the purpose of onesh and nekama. Uh, and it's also written, uh, there's a little bit, as you can see, a little bit of confusion here in the writing, a little bit of typos about the Pusuk, but let's read which, what's in the second parentheses, and the Egyptians will know through the Makos that I am Hashem, and when I will be honored uh, through bringing these punishments on Paro. So you see that in terms of the Makos on the Egyptians, the intent was to punish them, to bring uh, Nakama on them and to, and to make, uh, make it known in the world that those who, who defy Hashem uh, will be punished. Bechule, et cetera. Omnam, however, hayisurin sheyavo alecha, the punishments that would be brought on you, meaning on uh, Klal Yisrael, on, uh, on Bnei Yisrael, lo yihiyu b'derech zeh. They're not going to be brought with this intention. They're not going to be brought as punishments and, and as vengeful acts. 
Ella kede le raposcha, but rather to heal you, kede shetashu v'tshuva, in order, you, you will be punished in order to uh, motivate you to do tshuva, to repent, v'lo sashu v'lachet od, and to, and to make it so that you will not return again to the sin that brought, up, that brought about the punishment. V'ayin od l'kaman v'samach, and see uh, later on, meaning in the next trusha, the Zerah Shimshon is going to continue talking about this idea. So let's pause for a moment uh, to recap the second approach, the second answer. And that is that Hashem is never committing, never promising, never stating that he won't bring punishments on the Jewish people. When he says, ah, the, e the illnesses that I put on the Egyptians, I won't bring on you. What he means is, the illness, the punish, any punishment that comes to B'nai Yisrael or any illness that comes to the members of B'nai Yisrael will not be brought the same way it was brought on the Egyptians. It was brought on the Egyptians to cause them to suffer, to punish them, and to bring revenge upon them for their terrible acts. However, when it comes to Klai Yisrael, Hashem will never do that. When Hashem brings a punishment on Klai Yisrael, it's brought for the, for the uh, sole motivation to heal the Jewish people, to, to motivate them and to inspire them to do tshuva, to, to direct them towards uh, repairing their acts in order that they no longer, that they uh, reject the hate, reject the sin that they committed and, no, uh, and do not return to it so that there will be no need for any further uh, lessons to be brought about through some kind of onish chas v'shom, through some kind of punishment. So the Zer Shimshon has uh, asked a question, or at least he, he posed a question a little later in the piece that we then understand he answered with his first approach in the beginning, and then now with his second approach here in order to give us a deeper understanding of the Pusik. Yashukoch to everyone for participating, and uh, God willing, we look forward to learning again in Zer Shimshon uh, next week.